Here we go. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about a narrow aspect of the analog sword, and that is the way that the blade meets the, uh, the analog. Remember I told you we're going to talk about contact angle and stuff? All right, boss. All right, here's the deal, okay? Now, you have an analog roll, right? In your machine, and then you're bringing down that doctor blade to touch it. Because the analog roll is turning this way, your ink roll is turning this way, okay? Now, the doctor roller? Or uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah you, right. you can call it if you want okay. doctor roller, right. or fountain roller, or ink roller. Meter roller. roller. <laughs> it's almost like a metering roller. It almost is. And if you use it as uh, to meter like that, it, 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 its function now is as a metering roller. Mm -hmm. right? But when you're when you're blading, it's now just a kind of a transfer roller that's getting mm -hmm. ink up here. But you've got too much ink coming up, and then your doctor blade shaves the, uh, the rest of it off, right? And it sits there and you got a puddle that just kind of goes off the sides. But going this way, it's cleaning. Okay? Now, there's a couple of things that happen here. Number one, your press designer has factored in that we found that this angle right here, when you measure right here the blade, right, and you measure the wear with a special device called a goniometer, which measures contact angles, goniometer. When you use a goniometer to measure that, the ideal situation is that that's a 30 degree angle, okay? Now, that's not so important for you. It's good information for you to know. But the doctor blades are designed for that to happen. When Mark Andy designed these doctor blades for this machine, it's positioning of the blade, the blade length, and all of these things meant that at the end of the day, you come up with about 30 degree angle contact angle. And you still have a little bit of adjustment you can do. The adjustment that you have is more important to give you some flexibility to do what you need to do than, gee, I'm going to change it from 29 to 30 degrees. You're not, you're not doing that. Now, but let's talk about something else that happens. Here's your analog roll, and now your doctor blade is coming into contact with it, right? When, before your blade comes into contact with it, you're going to see your analog roll shine, even if it doesn't have ridges. It might have ridges, depending on what you're seeing from the rubber roller, but it's going to be glossy. It means it's got too much ink, okay? When you're presenting the blade down to it, you do that and you want it to be parallel, so you get the idea, you float it down until it's coming down evenly, and you want it to just touch it to where it now has a dull satin finish satin look. When you have that satin finish, now you're in good shape. Now here's a phenomenon that can happen if you're not careful. If your doctor blade assembly gives you the opportunity or permits you to go down too far, you're starting off and the doctor blade is not touching. You start going down on pressure and then your doctor blade has a satin finish. The analog roll has a satin finish. Now, if you accidentally or intentionally keep going down too far, all of a sudden it gets shiny. You say, what's happening there? What's happening is that as the doctor blade goes down, the ink is going this way, right? As the doctor blade comes down into contact, as you go too hard, it, let's exaggerate this view. It curls. Curls. Now, as the analog roll goes up, it gets in, it forces because the blade flexes and the ink forces its way through, again becoming shiny. So that's something to watch for when you're adjusting. Sometimes when it's shiny, it's, you think, oh my God, it's shiny, I need to, I need to go from further. Right. You need to back it back up and go in. What happens also, when you do this to the doctor blade, this little free tip that comes out here like this, the doctor blade wears it out right here, mm -hmm. then it breaks off and falls into your ink. It could be a whole thing, or it could be pieces of it. If you take your doctor blade out of the thing and inspect it, if you see flashing on it, like you almost like you have to strop it, like a brand new sharpened blade, you know, a barber strops it. If you see that on it, it doesn't necessarily always mean that, but you might want to consider how you're applying your pressure there, or your angle even, but that can happen there, okay? It's very important for you to see that, especially at speed. You can be messing with your doctor blade, going in, it gets dull, then you go in some more, it gets shiny again. 
That could be what's happening. It's hydroplaning under the animals. Okay? Question about that? Makes sense, right? It's intuitive. It works the same way on the Um, Here's another thing. You want minimal contact, which is good. But as a result, every, you know, you're watching, you're going and you're walk, walking up and down your machine, you're looking at the surface of your analogs roll too. Because what will happen is, that analog is very abrasive. It's ceramic and it's harder than steel. That's why you can use a steel blade on it. It wears the blade down. So now maybe you start to, maybe it's backing off. So if you're running this press right, and you're running at a speed, and you're running a long run, you may start to tweak down on it as the blade wears down. And as you've seen the very end of the blade, you can see that there's a, mm -hmm. an appreciable, if not significant amount of wear that takes yeah. place. All the blades got them. Right, you know when you play this like this yeah. and then you, you yeah. that, that's because the analog roll has been cutting mm -hmm. into it. Okay? Okay. Alright, end of that lesson.